Just a small town girl living in a Barbie world. She took the midnight train going anywhere. Just a city boy born and raised in grey New York. He took the midnight train going anywhere. Don't Stop Believing is a classic American rock song by the band Journey. Originally released in 1981, this mid-tempo rock anthem has continued to resonate to this day. I mean, clearly. Barbie and Oppenheimer couldn't be any different, but I suppose opposites attract. <laughs> Bleak, bright, serious, jovial, Christopher Nolan, Greta Gerwig, Julius Robert Oppenheimer, Barbie, July 21st, July 21st. You know what? When it was revealed that both of these movies refused to budge and would both take the same release date, it felt dangerous. It felt make or break for one. Like, it would be inevitable that one film would smash the box office, leaving the other with the leftovers and scraps. One thing felt clear though. It felt obvious which film would be which. Regardless of which film looks more your taste, I think everyone would have said that Barbie would easily be the film that has the most butts in seats. But Oppenheimer may do better in terms of critical acclaim. And although typically for these directors that narrative would usually be flipped, with Dunkirk being the highest grossing World War II film, Tenant underperforming, but still making a £150 million profit, and Interstellar making a healthy £500 million profit, whereas Greta Gerwig has had some smaller budget films, this just felt like Barbie would be the summer hit, and Oppenheimer would be the underperforming but maybe instant classic, probably leading Nolan to join a long line of directors to blame his box of his failings on Marvel and or the rotting minds of Gen Z or something. With all that being said, the films are not even here yet and I can already confirm to you that those early assessments will not be the case at all. Whoever it was who decided not to change dates may have made the smartest movie marketing decision in history. That or he was just incredibly stubborn and very lucky, but we'll give him the benefit of the doubt. You would have to be living under a rock in a different galaxy to have not have seen a Barbie versus Oppenheimer war has been upon us for the past few weeks. From the press junkets to building the Malibu dream house to literally everything coming out of Ryan Gosling's mouth, it has been relentless W's on the lead up to July 21st. All Barbie related though, and that's why it may surprise you that my winner of this clash is without a shadow of a doubt Oppenheimer. Now don't get me wrong, I think Barbie will have a stronger opening day and I also think it will gross more in the box office overall. The reason Oppenheimer wins is the fact that it's even in the conversation at all. And Barbie's done all the work, every event, interview, product and meme that comes from Barbie inadvertently also promotes Oppenheimer. The first picture I saw of the Malibu Dreamhouse, I saw on Twitter, which was in a meme format stating that Barbie's marketing versus Oppenheimer's marketing. Oppenheimer's marketing being another picture of a sad Killian Murphy. Oppenheimer is a little train that could, and each piece of Barbie related content is the coal keeping its engine burning and the hype rising. I say little train that could, don't worry, I do realise that Nolan was out here literally dropping nukes for this film. This is for my point. So. The marketing between these two films has added an extra 100 million at least to Oppenheimer's final return compared to if they had just released it a week later even. Whether on purpose or not, these two opposing films have managed to turn their releases into an event. Do not underplay how difficult that is. Aside from movies like Endgame and No Way Home, which were films that had a decade of material leading up to them, event style movie going experiences don't just come by. And especially not if you try to force them. I mean, we've seen The Flash and that Elemental film both try to replicate event style moments and both to pretty poor results and both in quite desperate ways. The Flash tried to follow the same style from Nowhere Home but with way more fan service and with any actor they could kidnap and hold at gunpoint until they got them to say that The Flash was the best film they'd ever seen in their goddamn lives. And Elemental was out here posting fake videos of audiences cheering for some character nobody knows as if he had just held Mjolnir or something. So spoiler alert, both of those failed at the box office. But those decisions were all made because those studios were chasing after the elusive event. If you want an event without any build up then most of the time you have to fall into it by accident. Usually as some kind of meme because the films are bad, like Cats or Rise of Gru. Oppenheimer and Barbie have managed to turn their marketing fight, fight is in very bold air quotes by the way, fight nonetheless into this huge Twitter moments that have generated countless memes and buzz. I mean it even feels so accidentally genius that this fight has had zero effort from the Oppenheimer side where Barbie side have any and everything you could possibly think of and then Oppenheimer have Killian Murphy looking sad sitting in a room on Google Me. But this 
funny comparison has helped it even more and has helped turn this into its own event with people wanting to do the double to watch Barbie and three hour Oppenheimer in one day. It'd be like Oppenheimer first and then Barbie, I think. I think it's like you want like Oppenheimer is going to be on a, on a Friday. Do you know what I mean? And then you, you can go. I'll probably see it in the afternoon. You want that packed audience. And then I want to see Barbie right afterwards with a packed audience. And who cares what order they watch them in? All that matters is that those butts are in seats and the audiences are converging. It's been fun and it's been lighthearted and it's, and it's been a moment. And honestly, it's been refreshing in a space that often feels so self-serious and aggressively opinionated. I feel like I'm at a point where both films could come out now and be dog shit. And part of me wouldn't even care because it's cliche, but it's true. And that's that the joy is in the journey and this journey has been marketed to f**k